we're in a great spot. We're able to spin up boxes. We're able to assign them to providers like VirtualBox and customize those providers. And we know all the basic Vagrant core commands. Now on to the next item for our five things, which is network settings. I'm gonna create a comment here and I'm, I could sit here and just blab at you about what's happening here, but I'd rather show you through a demo and then come back to this. So let's do that. Let's go into our machine and I have mine up and I'm going to SSH into the box and I'm going to update all my packages. And so, uh, just FYI guys, we're doing couple things while this, before all this happens, we're doing this manually. So you guys can understand what's happening with these different settings and wait until the very end when we get to provisioning where this is all becoming automated. But I want to show you this in steps so that you understand normally with vagrant, you're not manually, just to be clear, you're not manually typing out all the, all the things I'm about to do. So this box came but it was blank, it's empty. There's no Apache on it, there's no web server. So if I try to navigate to something like var www, the folder doesn't exist. Well, let's install Apache. And then I'm also gonna install Vim just because I like Vim for opening files in case I need to, which I am not sure if I will yet. All right, so this is installing and we have Apache on our server. So it should have created by default, it did a www folder and it created a default HTML. Maybe you've seen these before. It's the default Apache, it works page. Um, this is what happens when you have a blank install of Apache. Now, if you, don't understand at all what's going on here with server stuff. Just skip over, just follow along as best you can, then skip to the end where you can do the Scotchbox stuff where we automate this. But if you do know servers a little bit, um, you'll be really excited to see this. So we have Apache, but it's locked down inside of this box here. So how do we, how do we access this index.html page? We want to be able to be like um, local host, index.html or whatever. Like, how do we do that? And so I actually made this nice little graphic here. I want to explain a little bit about what the Vagrant file is doing. So we know what the box is doing. We know what the virtual box provider is doing. These two are working together here. Ignore everything blue in the bottom left right now. And right now we just installed Apache turning our server into a web server and we need to figure out how to get apache from the box to a url or like a, a port or something so that we can see the files right now it's totally on lock and contained to itself one way to do that with vagrant let me uh unminimize this one way to do that is through the network settings. So let's just do the first default one that they gave us. And this is straight from their boilerplate. We're doing config VM provide or network, just like the other ones, whatever code they told us to, you don't even have to worry about what this is really doing for this part for now. And then what we're saying is the guest 80 port. The guest is a fancy way to say our virtual box. It's the guest on our laptop machine called the host. So our host is the laptop hosting the guest, which is the virtual machine. And if you don't know this, Apache's default port is 80. Complicated way, comp it might be complicated or whatever, but we're gonna say, hey, throw the 80 port to the 8080 port on our local machine. And if we do that, figure, we'll have to exit the box and we'll have to reload. Just 
gonna reboot. Gonna rerun those settings. I'm, let me just clean up my windows here while that's running. And you can see, I think these settings were happening automatically, but you can see when I ran Vagrant Reload, it's kind of spelling out all these things uh, that it's doing. So it's like, where let's go to, we reloaded it. This is the same thing if you ran Vagrant up, you would probably see similar things. It's like downloading the box, seeing if it's updated, seeing if you have it in your cache, uh, preparing the network for forwarding and saying exactly what I was saying. We're taking the default Apache 80 port and we're passing it to 8080, which is gonna let us ac access from our host machine, AKA our laptop. Let's see if this works. Local host 8080, it works. So um, we're able now to access the virtual thing through this 8080 port. So we're able to see default Apache port through the 8080 port. And then, I mean, just to keep showing you guys, it also opens up like the SSH settings and some other stuff um, if you want to go through and read that. All right, so let's enter here. And just as a proof of concept, I'm going to go here and I'm SSH into the box. And I'm going to open this up and say it works. Oh, settings are all weird. I'm going to open it up and say, it works, yo. So if I save this, oh my gosh, what's happening? If I save this, this should update to say it works, yo. That's awesome. We now have a working web server we're able to access. Now access, accessing the files is a pain right now. In our next lesson, we'll figure out how to make that easier but we're able to now forward ports and connect through the network. You don't really even have to be a network engineer to kind of pick up on what's going on here. Um, you can use this default one if you wanted to. We could switch it so that it's assigned to an IP address instead. So let's do that. And the reason you would want to do that is, so I'm reloading it so, um, it's all the same settings, except it's saying, hey, tie this to the 127.0.01. And the reason that is, is this is public. I wish there's a, I don't I was to comment this, but this is public. So if you are an app like Slack or whatever, and you want to listen in on 8080, just as a scary security thing, technically they can just read this file too. It's not protected. If you wanted to now tie it to 12701, check this out. Oh, hold on. There it goes. Now if we now it's tied to the IP address. We have a little bit more control to it. If you're like me though, you hate doing development like this, where you're tied to an IP address and a port number or a local host and a port number. So how do we make this a little bit cleaner? You can actually create a private network where we're gonna now, instead of doing all this forwarding stuff, well, this will keep, but we're gonna now, or no, we don't need that. We're going to tie it to this IP address. So now no more port stuff. We're creating a secret private network. Let's reload. And if this works, we should be able to access this box through an IP address now that's just local to us or private to us. So this is obviously if you're on the internet, you try to visit that, it's not gonna work. And let it run. And hopefully I refresh, it works. So we can, we now have an IP address. There's no ugly port stuff. If you have some development experience locally before, what we can do is now tie a domain name to that. So if you're on Mac or Windows or Linux, there's a 
thing on your computer called a host file. And if you open that up, I already have a bunch of these. I'm going to hide them. You can paste that IP address. And we're saying for any DNS request that is super cool dot local or ww dot super cool dot local. I want it to mask here similar to like an A record would for DNS. So if this works. Oh, Google won't let that happen. There it goes. Or we could do www. That's great. Now we actually have a host name and an actual local domain using Vagrant. I hope that all makes sense. I know uh, depending on your server knowledge level, that was probably a little complicated or not. Hopefully you get the general idea though. We're now stuck at the problem where we want to edit files, but we don't want to have to do it through Vim, through SSH. So let's figure out a way to map files to our computer in the next lesson.